You've made yourself quite a nice studio over the years of your retirement. Yeah? You gonna get my girls up here? Absolutely. My girl's up there somewhere too, isn't she? So tell me what that item is again in your hand. It's called a mall stick. Don't stand too M O H L. All painters have used a mall stick. It keeps your hand from falling onto the white paint. Behind you is paper towel. Mm -hmm. I need a piece of paper towel. Okay. Let me take a so, good look at what you're working on here. And this is painting number what for you in your life, what would oh, you say? I don't know. In the scores. Hundreds? No, maybe not hundreds, but certainly close to it. Remember what the first thing you painted was? I don't think I can remember that. That's a long time ago. But, uh... How old were you? I don't know. I, I must have been in, uh... 12, 13, and that's when I discovered that I like to make pictures. So I used to copy the comics, and then I'd copy things out of magazines. I actually really didn't do any real painting until I got to art school. Can you show me what you were showing me before about how you have to hold it? Can you show the camera so we can... Uh, since I have this... Don't, you can kind of keep it this, up there. there since you go. this thumb is dead, I can't hold this like this. So I have to hold it like this in, the, in between here. Did you have to like relearn how to do I it? or like? literally relearn how to use this left hand. I'm left-handed, but because I don't have the use of the, of the thumb, I just had to learn to grip, grip it because I couldn't give up... You know, I had to paint or draw, let's put it that way. Right. How, how long a period did you take a break from painting or drawing? I mean, you, when you were doing photography, yeah, a, you didn't a very do... Long I don't time. remember sitting at dinner tables while we were kids and you drawing no. us, but you've done it certainly now. Like, it seemed like you just totally put it aside for 50 years. Well, it's not, not 50 years, but for many, many years I, I really did put it aside. Because to me, everything was photography. Aside from making a living, it was still the thing I loved the most was to making pictures. But um, around 1996, I think, 1997, I'm sure you don't remember this, but I had a bout of clinical depression. Do you remember that? We've talked about it a little yeah. bit in the past, but I don't think I, I had about. I don't know how. I don't think I knew how how what was going on at the time. And Kara bought me a little set of watercolor paints. And that's what. And uh, she says maybe this will take your mind off what bothers you. So I started to play around with it, and then as I got well, and got past it, and got over the depression, I just continued to do it. 1997 and 1998, all those pictures upstairs hanging on the living room wall, that's from that period. It was a very, very productive period for me. And then about a year ago, I can't tell you why, I decided, hey, why don't you try pastel? And I did that flower picture. Right. And my God, it was just amazing. It was all like a whole new world. And overnight, one night, I taught myself how to um, how to work in pastel, and I've been working that way ever since. Did you have someone older, I and mean, when you were young, in your family that was also into it? Well, my mother had a brother, Bob, 
he was a little bit this side of genius. He was into everything, from golf to photography to painting. And I hero worship that man. I don't, do I know him? No, it was, remember Lee? Yeah. Alice is Alice, sure. Alice's father. Huh. And I just love that man. I so hero worshiped him he, because he was into so many things. He was so bright. And then one day he took a bathtub and put a sun lamp next to the bathtub. Oh, yeah. And the sun lamp fell into the bathtub. And that was the end of Bob. That's amazing. That ge genius on one level. And, and, and something so yeah. dumb as that. Yeah. Anyway, that, that, that might have... Oh, he did. A, he, we owned a few paintings that he did, watercolors that he did, and that might have turned me on to um, art. But I always, I was always, as a kid, interested in in drawing and copying cartoons, comics, um, and then I didn't do much in high school. And when I graduated high school, I was not sure what I wanted to do. So I took a year off, and I worked at a number of jobs, different, trying different things. Many of them were, were selling men's clothes. Uh, I knew that's not what I wanted to do. One day, I used to go to, so I was out of work for a while, and walking along Market Street, I bumped into an old friend. I used to go to Allinger's Pool Room at 10.30 in the morning. <laughs> I would get the very first copy of the Daily News and get the first one ads for jobs. So I used to hang out at this pool room at 13th and Market. So I bumped into this old friend and I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm going to art school. And he told me all about the Philadelphia College wow. of Art. I said, that sounds great. So I applied and I, I was accepted and that began it. The first year was basic. Everybody takes the same first year, and then I fell in love with illustration. And then my last three years, I majored in illustration and, and painting. So that was, the, that was the real start of it all. And then the Army made, made a photographer out of me because I lied. In the seventh week of basic training, they said to me, what did you do in civilian life? So if I said I just graduated from an art school, you can be sure I would have gone to the infantry. <laughs> so I said, I'm always a photographer. So don't you think they sent me to Fort Monmouth, New Jersey for 18 weeks to learn photography? And I fell in love with it. And then I went to Europe to the Army's photo. They, they actually taught you, even though you said you were? I never touched a camera my whole life. Oh, wow. And then they taught me photography. And then I went to Europe to the Army's photographic headquarters. And, 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 then, and then everything else wrote itself. It was just, when I came home, I told my parents I'm going to be a photographer. And my mother said, so why did you go to art school? So, you know, it was very hard to explain to her. Without the, the knowledge of, of, of studying art, I couldn't achieve any real success in photography. And that's, that's, that was the whole story. Tell me about this, uh, this, this picture here. I'm standing on the top of a, um, a top of a mountain 1,600 feet above sea level, which is the, the back portion of the picture. That's the Wilson Home Fjord in Thule, Greenland. And um, I'm standing on the top of a mountain and I'm dressed, <laughs> a little overdressed. I'm wearing mucklucks and a parka, and carrying all that equipment. I normally wore mucklucks and the Parker, but I didn't carry so many cameras. Who were you working for? I was working for RCA. They were the prime contractors on a radar defense system. They were building in Thule, Greenland called Bemuse, Ballistics Missile Early Warning System. And I went there during the construction and installation stage to photograph it being constructed. Uh -huh. The f speed graphic in my right hand, that was normally what we worked with. The 35 millimeter, that was my own camera. Yeah, that's cool.